Bloody Roar 4. The beast system contradicts the design philosophy of the other games by making the beast gauge a second health bar, which it wasn't before. What's also strange is that when you're in beast form, when you get hit, your normal health doesn't go down at all. Only the beast gauge does, since it's the second health bar. So your normal health only goes down when you're inhuman. This not only causes fights to drag on for a long time since you need to knock out not only your opponent's first health bar, but also their second health bar, which again, is the beast gauge. It ultimately destroys the strategic use of managing your beast form like you could before. When you finish a round against a CPU or human player, knocking them out of their beast form in the process, this means when the next round starts, their meter will be empty just like any other Bloody Roar game. But the glaring issue with this is that it's a second health bar. When they have their normal health back and you're hitting them, not only are they getting meter back, but they're also getting health back. So once you take them out of their human form, they revert to their beast forms until they're knocked out, which is completely backwards. Hitting, evading, or taking damage from your opponent isn't the only way to fill meter in this game either. You can now hold the beast button to transform, so now you don't even have to fight to earn meter. Because the beast gauge is now a second health bar, and you can go into beast form as long as you have normal health to sacrifice either by yourself or if the opponent depletes it, this also means that you can do about 4 beast drives in the course of a round. But what's flawed about this is that since the beast gauge is a second health bar, you're still sacrificing health regardless. Beast drives in this game still deplete the normal health bar and beast gauge like in the prior games, but because the game is extremely focused on this stay in beast form to win mentality, the trade off to balance the new beast system is that the beast drives do little damage. But there's really no point in using beast drives considering that a single hit, especially from a power character like Gato, or a string of attacks can do more damage. There isn't a button combination or a single button input for Hyper Beast usage in this game. So in order to go Hyper Beast in Bloody Roar 4, you have to sacrifice all of your normal health for access. Hyper Beast in this game still retains the attributes that the characters had in Primal Fury slash Extreme, but it doesn't freeze time like it does in 3 in Primal Fury Extreme. And sacrificing your health to basically play a worse Hyper Beast form when you can regenerate that same health throughout the course of a fight isn't worth it. One unique problem is that because of this beast system change, Ryoho and Mana have a huge advantage in battle. The game does not recognize Ryoho and Mana as one character. Mana is the beast gauge, while Ryoho is the normal health. Mana charges the beast gauge, but Ryoho's health is not sacrificed. And once Mana is in beast form, and can only be hit in beast form mind you, and you input the double quarter circle forward beast drive, it completely drains the opponent's beast gauge which again is a second health bar, which means it's a one-hit KO beast drive when the opponent has no normal health left. And this can be spammed. Career mode is the game mode that allows you to unlock various abilities you can equip to your characters after earning DNA points across a grid. The five main problems with this mode is that one, when you start, your character doesn't have two staple mechanics, heavy guard and air recovery. You have to unlock them. This is stupid because in any other mode in this game and in every other Bloody Roar game's extras options, you had these mechanics by default. Not including Bloody Roar Extreme's no blocking mode, of course. Now the CPUs can just juggle you to death or break your light guard at the leisure since the game took heavy guard and air recovery away from you. What I would do to improve this is not only give the player heavy guard and air recovery because they're literally defenseless if they don't have those, but also give them the evade type that's unique to the character by default then make them able to unlock the evade type from this game and the evade types from the prior games after earning a certain amount of DNA points. This would then allow the player to choose their preference of defense for their career character. The reason why I mentioned evade types is because while I was playing through career mode on Bloody Roar 4, I unlocked the Bloody Roar 3 slash extreme evade type for Reiji, and only certain characters have certain evade types. Gato, Long, Alice, and Jenny, for example, have the guard escape from Bloody Roar 1 and 2 by default. Shenlong and Sheena had the Bloody Roar 3 extreme evade type by default, and Nagi and Yugo have the Bloody Roar 4 counter evade type by default. The second problem is that the map doesn't show the spaces you've cleared or how paths are connected. Three things I do to fix these problems is make unique or short pathways for all the characters since the grid can be confusing. 
make the DNA point limit 10,000 to maybe 30,000 DNA points max, and obviously fix the map so people know what paths connect to each other. Problem number three. It makes Sheena and Long hidden characters even though they're mainstays. Why are the new characters not hidden unlockables, aside from Dragon Ryoho? Why do Koryu and Uranus have to be unlocked here instead of in arcade mode like before? People shouldn't have to grind to get mainstay unlockables, and especially mainstay characters that were never hidden characters, Long and Sheena. Problem number four, third beast drives. Third beast drives for some reason are locked behind career mode. Bloody Roar 3 gave all of the characters second beast drives by default, and even Sheena's, Buzuzima's, and Long's secret third beast drives were given to us on the jump. Career mode locking third beast drives behind it is mind boggling to me and not even worth it considering what I mentioned earlier regarding the beast drives' damage output being so little. Problem number five. You can only save up to eight slots in career mode, specifically in the English version. You better have a second memory card if you wanna have career versions of all of your characters, or you better have eight favorites, or you better import or emulate the Japanese version. Otherwise, you're screwed. Other problems. The characters feel heavier. BR4 got rid of the getup attack that was in every Bloody Roar title until this game. In the US version, jump canceling is locked behind career mode, so you can't even do that in the default game, unless you have the Japanese version. Few stance moves have been removed and replaced with sidestepping in the English version. Force fields are on every stage, so final walls, minimum walls, and no walls, along with the other extra options you had in BR2, 3, and Primal Fury slash Extreme, gone. Tomoyuki Hamada, a composer and musician, directed the voice narration for this game. Yoshihiro Sukahara, an arranger, composed this game's soundtrack. He previously worked on sound effects for Bloody Roar 2, but this was Sukahara's first time composing a full soundtrack. So basically they hired a composer and musician to direct the voice narration of the game, and hired an arranger who had no experience in composing music at the time, composed the music. Voices stop while the lips keep moving. <laughs> you don't seem to get it. Scenes are not timed properly, which leads to long pauses in between lines of dialogue. Yes, that's right. But why is Nagi loyal to the unborn? Voices get cut off during scene transitions. With this, we finally get a blow in on Gaia, who is. Long took advantage of us. There are typos. Tell me, that dragon, what's the connection? You came all the way here in your beast form. Its purpose was to rid this planet of useless life and... And the voice acting isn't good. Xi'an. No. The unborn? You again. What did you do to Nagi? For those of us who suffer eternally, I will bring the light here and now! Well then, show me your true self. What? My true self? What are you talking about? Ah, uh, you. Are fine just as you are now. <laughs> The power of the changing will only increase. Can you control it until the end? The dragon. Do not fight the dragon, because it is going to be the most infuriating experience you will ever have. Not only is the dragon frustrating to fight, but you also do not get a single continue 
if you lose to the dragon. You will have to start arcade all over again just to get to the arcade boss. Which isn't even a secret boss at that. So, stand back, heavy guard, run under the dragon, let him kill himself with the beast drive usage since the beast gauge is a second health bar, get the last hidden, or time him out from simply having more health than him. The lip flap animations were done for the Japanese script for the game, but this game was rushed out to release in America and Europe first, so the Japanese version didn't come out until 2004. Bloody Roar 1 had Rave Mode, Bloody Roar 2 had Story Mode and Beast Drive. Bloody Roar 3 brought back Rave Mode, but renamed it Hyper Beast and gave us two Beast Drives along with three secret hidden ones, specifically for Sheena, Buzuzima, and Long. Bloody Roar Primal Fury slash Extreme gave all of the characters unique attributes to their Hyper Beast forms. Then Bloody Roar 4 destroyed everything, commercially, critically, and the quality and depth of the series. However, these are things I can appreciate Bloody Roar 4 for. Having more defensive options with Bloody Roar 1 and 2's Guard Escape, Bloody Roar 3 slash Primal Fury Extreme's Evade, and the new Counter Evade that's exclusive to this game. There's Blood, definitely the most we've seen in a Bloody Roar game. It's good that we have that again after Primal Fury Extreme got rid of it. There are three costumes like in Bloody Roar 3, but unfortunately only 8 out of the 16 characters only have three costumes, and it's still lacking the four costumes that everyone had in Bloody Roar 2. Chinese Temple and Midnight Rooftop have transitions now. Prison Tower's a dope stage, and Back Alley's different transition is cool. Graphically, I actually think the game looks just as good as Primal Fury slash Extreme. The problem is that it's too dark. Aside from that, that's really it. Oh wait, wait. Actually, Ragey. Ragey is the last thing. He's cool. Ryoho and Mana could have asked the Yadagaratsu to help seal the dragon instead of the roster, which would then give us more solid character interactions that we haven't seen since Bloody Roar 2. The ideas are there, but the execution is extremely poor. I know there's a good percentage of people out there that actually like this game, and if you liked this game or still like it, that's fine, but if you were never aware of how this game was on a technical slash mechanical standpoint compared to the prior entries, Calling this game a successor in any way will be a slap to the face of this game series. The last good Bloody Roar game was Bloody Roar Extreme. And now you all know just how different in quality this game is compared to Bloody Roar Extreme in the games before that game. It's not a good Bloody Roar game. It may have been good when you were a child or teenager since you didn't know any of this, but anyone that disagrees or want to like this game simply for what it could have been that sucks for you. This game was rushed, and it's painfully obvious. Anyways, I'll catch you guys in the next upload, whenever, if ever. Be easy, stay safe, peace. Another shot?